let me stop you here. If you have not read Twelfth Night, or hate Act 2, Scene 5 for some reason, and jesting, this is not the video for you. Ugh, fire and brimstone. However, if you have dignified yourself as a Shakespearean nerd and wish to analyze, then you've come to the right place. Let's get started by using woven, written, oral, visual, electronic, and non-verbal communication elements to analyze Kafno and Armfield's renditions of Twelfth Night. So let's rewind so I can give you some preface. Act 2, Scene 5 is a monologue by Malvolio, which helps give insight to the director's approach through his verbal and nonverbal communication. In Kafno's version, Malvolio's nonverbal behavior consists of him protruding his chest, sticking up his nose, asserting dominance and sitting in his imaginary throne, and not being able to produce a genuine smile. Malvolio's creepiness overall adds to the discomfort of viewers while watching this film, aiding in the director's message. On the other hand, we have Armfield's film, where we see a more dynamic Malvolio. Better, he is seen as having crossed arms and raised eyebrows, yielding to an inflated image of self and a general dissatisfaction with life, like Kafno's Malvolio. However, after reading Olivia's supposed love letter, his nonverbal behavior drastically changes, where he has a genuine smile and expresses joy and excitement, unlike the previous Malvolio. The director's approach here was to make the audience comfortable by having a somewhat reliable Malvolio. Ultimately, the director's end goal in production can be seen through the differences in the Malvolios. So you might be asking yourself, what does this mean? So, Armfield, on one hand, was trying to appeal to a younger audience. <gasps> totally didn't throw in a random Mario gif just to appeal to a younger audience. Totally. So when I talk about Armfield appealing to a younger audience, this is what I'm talking about. So if we go to Wikipedia here, we look at the Beach Party film. So... 1963 film, but if you continue to scroll down, you'll see that there is a slew of movies produced in 1967. And well, if you know when Kafno and Armfield produced their movies, it was in the 80s, so you're like, well, Tori, why does this matter? Well, if we go to the cultural impact, you'll see that even in 1996, the Beach Party movies were still having an impact. So Armfield's choice in having the set design be of a beach is directly corresponded to the Beach Party films, and that's showing that he's trying to appeal to this younger audience. And so through him trying to appeal to this younger audience, we can then interpret that his goal was to get younger viewers interested in Shakespeare. Another important part to the visual aspect is not only the casting of characters, but the character attire. So if you notice in Armfields, they're wearing beach attire because they're on a beach, and they're also generally younger actors, which is Again, Armfield trying to appeal to this younger audience because a younger audience will be able to relate better to younger actors. Now, Kavno's, on the other hand, he did not have the same goals, so his casting is directly related to a more realistic approach to Shakespeare's Twelfth Night, in addition to he accurately depicts what they would be wearing in that time period. So Kafno did not have the same goals as Armfield, so he did not try to appeal to this younger audience, which is why you can see that he has a more accurate depiction of what Twelfth Night would probably have looked like in Shakespeare's time, though throughout it you can see it has rather a grim side to it, and this is because he's trying to condemn kind of what was socially acceptable back then. So throughout the film you see misogyny and violence of kind of the mentally ill, and that this is Kafno's way of rejecting that idea and saying that, hey, this isn't okay, and making that stark contrast between what's socially accepted nowadays versus what was back in Shakespeare's time. In analyzing the written portion along with the two movie clips, we can see that they have a similarity in how they convey the text. They both take the written words and overemphasize it in their actions to make the meaning more clear to an audience that cannot just go ahead and reread the text in this medium. Oh, perchance, wind, wind up my watch. Wind up play with my, my uh, watch. Or play with my... Some rich jewel. Some rich jewel. Toby approaches. Toby approaches. Toby approaches. There to Kurt me. says there to me. However, this is pretty much the only thing they share in common, and it's for clarity's sake, not for the sake of a message. Going back to the visual form, since it is more predominant in this medium, it is interesting to note where the directors choose to place Toby, Fabian, and Andrew in relation to Malvolio. Kafna always has the three behind Malvolio, where they are looking at and bring more attention to Malvolio, making him the center of the scene. 
On the other hand, Armfield uses an electronic element in his film, A Lift, to physically bring the three quite literally above Malvolio, which ties hand in hand to the director's approach on jesting. Jesting is totally okay because the three are above the rules and just having fun. The view of fun is again for that younger audience he was hoping to obtain. Now, Kafna's view on jesting goes directly hand in hand with his overall message of the film, which is where he was condemning misogyny and the violence towards the mentally ill. Now, what you don't see in the clips shown in this video is that Malvolio is put into a prison-like cell and he's treated really poorly, which is why everything's so grim and Kafta is trying to completely condemn this. So his overall message with jesting is that of that it's not okay and so it completely contradicts Armfield's idea. Overall, these two films had two completely different approaches, which is why you see in the end that they were depicted so differently.